Well, throughout this pandemic, we've been seeing numbers flashing up on the screens, how we're doing, and talking about the Isle of Man, or are we doing enough vaccines, how many, how many cases per thousand, that sort of thing. Uh, one person that's kept an eye on this and has been doing regular updates is Michael Josem. Uh, you, you're a data expert, or data, as you'd say, if you're in Australia. Um, you, you've kept an eye on this whole thing. So how is the Isle of Man faring? Sure. So the, we can measure the these the performance here of the Isle of Man um, across comparable jurisdictions um, on various different metrics. Uh, and so back last year, um, one of the things that was uh, m interesting to a lot of people was to, to measure the death rate here on the Isle of Man. Um, and on one hand, um, it is, you know, each one of the, the lives that have been lost here in the Isle of Man and globally um, it's a, it's a tragedy, but um, it's also important to measure these sort of things. Um, and we can see that there were... Um, uh, in terms of the number of deaths, um, there were 297 deaths on the Isle of Man um, for every uh, million people, um, which is substantially better than across in the UK. Um, but it is roughly in line with the, the performance in Guernsey and Hawaii. Um, and of course, it is much worse than in uh, places that were much faster to close their borders, such as uh, Australia and New Zealand. That's that's if you ramped it up to COVID deaths, that's what that would work out, would it? If you... Yeah, so that, that, that's confirmed uh, COVID deaths um, per, per, per capita. But people die anyway from other things, and there's always been this great debate about how many people were on end of life anyway, and it just caused them to die from that. Is that something you can take into consideration? So in this case, the statistics issued by the government um, are, are generally very comparable. Here in the British Islands, the Isle of Man and the, and the other Crown Dependencies and the United Kingdom all use exactly the same definition. Um, there was some, some, some discrepancies back in March last year, um, but since April, April 2020, um, all those stats have been measured exactly the same way across the UK and all the Crown Dependencies. Um, and, and also... Even if there is a small divergence between different countries in, in different parts of the world, um, the, that's certainly very accurate in terms of the broad orders of magnitude. Um, and so there's no definition um, that, uh, that, you know, there's no definitional issues here that really matter. You know, there have been a lot more deaths uh, in the United Kingdom than in, than in the Isle of Man um, and Guernsey. Um, and then there have been a lot more deaths in the Isle of Man and Guernsey than in places such as Australia and New Zealand. Let's talk about vaccine rollout now, because obviously uh, I think Hawaii is at the top of your list, isn't it? And, and uh, we are doing so-so. I mean, there's this massive debate about comparing us really just with the other crown dependencies, which we are still on your list anyway, still slightly behind. Yeah. So first of all, just to understand um, for the benefit of the listeners about how these countries were chosen, these countries and these jurisdictions were chosen uh, back in April, uh, back in April last year. I think it's really important um, that when doing fair and honest data analysis to use the same jurisdictions over time, because otherwise you can um, have a um, have a risk of of adding or removing countries or jurisdictions that, um, that can perhaps distort the outcome. And so comparing the Isle of Man on the same jurisdictions as we've been doing now since since April last year, um, there's um, the Isle of Man has, is, has so far um, administered 4.3 doses per 100 people, um, which is a long way behind the United Kingdom and the other Crown Dependencies, which are all you know, either, you know, double or, or even higher in the case of the UK. Um, the UK has, has administered more than 10 doses per 100 people um, so far. Um, and Hawaii, well, that's, a, that's another, even further ahead, um, they've administered 13, 13 and a half doses per 100 people. Because um, you could add Israel all... in there now if you're doing a new list, and of course there's even higher still. So I see what you're saying, you're keeping with the original uh, data you had there, the original countries you picked. Uh, it's not yeah, exactly, and so that and that and that, what's important about that is that these these other jurisdictions they're all island nations or island island jurisdictions. So so whether and because that was much more relevant uh, in uh, in April last year, whether it be the the other crown dependencies or whether it be the UK, whether it be our nearest neighbours across an island, um, or whether it be Hawaii or Iceland or Malta or Australia or New Zealand, um, these are all comparable island jurisdictions. Which now your data is not have... taking into account the second dosage, is it? Because we are going with um, the WHO a group idea that we'll go early, which is, I presume everyone else on that list, bar the Channel Islands, are keeping to as well. So these, this chart shows all doses administered, whether it's first dose or second dose. As of today, um, which is Burns Night, um, uh, the 25th of January, whether or not you include first or second doses doesn't really matter because because very few people in any of the jurisdictions have received a second dose. Because the vaccination rollout is so early in its stages, um, 
almost all the vaccine doses in all the jurisdictions compared here are first doses. So, so that so that first and second thing is not really an an, an issue. Um, and even if even in subsequent months, um, as second doses are, are, are counted, um, what we're counting here is the number of vaccine doses administered. So, so if you, as a as a jurisdiction, you deploy give twenty five people two doses, or you give fifty people one dose. Either way, that counts as fifty doses. Well, to, to finalise this, um, you do summaries, so you, you crunch the numbers, and how would you kind of put this in a few sentences about how the Alban is doing? So. Compared to the United Kingdom and our nearest neighbours, um, we have had much lower deaths due to coronavirus per capita, um, but we've had much more um, deaths due to coronavirus than countries such as Australia and New Zealand, which sought from the very beginning um, to enforce a policy of elimination and, and border restrictions. Um, and uh, on the case of vaccine deployment, the, the, it's essentially reversed. Um, and so we have deployed many less vaccines per capita um, than elsewhere um, in the, the UK or the, or the Crown Dependencies. Um, but we have deployed more doses of the vaccine than the EU nations or Australia and New Zealand, which haven't even started um, issuing or deploying any doses at all yet of the vaccines. See, that's so interesting you say that we're doing less than the Crown Dependencies or, or even the UK, because, I mean, one of the questions we get hammered by asking constantly, and I, I don't think we do actually constantly do it, but we keep asking at press conferences about we seem to be behind, but we don't hear that from the uh, health minister that we are behind. So it, it confuses a lot of people when you, you throw that sort of information up, doesn't it? Well, well, these are just the facts, and so, so I'm, I'm not in the, you know, business of making up the facts. The facts are that, that according to the Isle of Man government, there've been three thousand six hundred and forty-eight doses um, administered in the Isle of Man, which, for a population of, uh, of eighty-five thousand people, works out to be four point three doses per per hundred people. Compare that, for example, to Guernsey. Um, which has had 4,640 doses um, for a population of 67,000, um, gives you a, a per capita rate of, of 6.9 doses per, per 100 people. So th these are the facts from the, right. and they're the, the same sources, whether it be the Isle of Man government or the Guernsey government or the UK government and so on. Um, uh, and, uh, and for people who are interested, um, all this data and all the underlying um, sources are all available, freely available on my, on my website at michaeljosem.com. Um, in the interests of open um, science, I've freely licensed them to be um, accessible um, under a very, you know, permissive licensing thing that's available for free. Anyone who wants to use it, you feel free to, you know, use create your own charts. Um, all the sources are there, are public. Um, all the numbers are, are, are verifiable, um, and that's what I think is really important about science: is that it needs to be open and, and public and, and very transparent. Um, I, I, finally, on that, then it's interesting the data that we get released here in the Old Man. We've asked for more information. Guernsey particularly, and actually Jersey, looking at their sites, they seem to issue you with more information. That must be helpful. Sure. So I've only I've only um, included data that, that that is comparable for the Isle of Man. Um, and so in other jurisdictions, most notably the US, um, but also some of the other jurisdictions, they also um, are publishing how many doses of the vaccine they've actually received. Uh, and so if you think of the process of, of, of administering vaccines, there's a whole process from uh, purchasing the, the vaccine in the first place, to getting it manufactured, to getting it uh, transported to your jurisdiction, to then transporting it to local distribution centres and then ultimately putting it into someone's arm in it with, with a needle. And so and so all, well, not, all, almost all the other jurisdictions here um, are far more transparent about the different stages. Um, here in the Isle of Man, the government has not, to the best of my knowledge, has not published any information about how many vaccine doses uh, have actually arrived here on the Isle of Man. Um, I'm not aware of any information about them being, you know, when, when or how they've been distributed to the various distribution um, outlets, um, whether which I, I guess today will be just entirely in the hospital, um, whereas other other jurisdictions do publish this information a lot more transparency. And how often do you update your information, by the way? So I'm trying to update it about once a week or so. Uh, it, it varies, um, you know, and one of the one of the interesting things is doing it any more frequently than that um, is especially in cases of, of Hawaii and and New Zealand because they they're un, under radically different time zones. Um, it's, it's a bit of an awkward thing about that. So I'm trying to do it each Sunday.